It's time for new painting and this time I'm portraying a well-known individual from Argentina. He is well known there of course because he is the president and nowadays he's he's really recognized all over the world because he's really charismatic. His name is Javier Millet and there were a lot of good photos to choose from when I looked around and um, I will sh show some of them. Uh, this one I was really considering for a while, uh, this one I was not really, and uh, when I found this one, yeah, I couldn't resist. I really needed to do this one. And uh, I just wanted to get rid of the suit. I want to use this face because it's so, so intense and really represent his essence, I believe. So I thought the head was perfect here. And the lighting was okay as well, I thought. And uh, I just want to dress him up a little bit. So I was thinking maybe a conquistador. I decided not to do that. Uh, I got rid of these ideas. I didn't do him as uh, George Washington either. But I decided to go with a painting by Diego Velázquez. And uh, it's not the first time I paint from a Diego Velázquez painting. I have one right behind here. Uh, the Pope, and um, this time I just wanted some nice dressing. I don't want the surroundings to be too important. I want something uh, dressed up, and uh, and I it's just a feeling you get. You get a feeling when you see the person, and they want to 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 find something that that he could fit in, and uh, I don't know. I go by instinct. And um, so what I did was to, to take, the, take the painting, get rid of some extra hair. Even though Millet has a lot of hair, he, I wanted to get rid of the surroundings so I could see his hair here and put his face in it. And um, it, was, um, it seems like something that would be fun to do. So I just started to sketch it up and I started to paint. This is a fun character to paint. He has such a strong charisma and raw expression in his face. You can really tell when you have a person that is all transparent, so to speak. He's not trying to portray himself as someone else, he's just himself. And that's really the kind of person that is fun to paint. I admire that genuine way of being. It must be hard to be as mad as he seems to, and to have that kind of integrity that he has, and to be able to put himself out there regardless of the critiques surely that meets him and the social consequences that comes with being yourself in that manner. But he seems to have no fear of showing what he is and what he stands for, and that's really admirable. I start with the darker areas as usual. It looks a little grim and dull in the beginning, but I know that's what I need to do. I need to work with the different shades of the dark areas. It's good to start in the beginning without the lighter colors because the lighter colors can distract you from the fine nuances in the shadows. So I start with the darker tones. I look at the colors from the original that I paint from and I don't concern myself too much with how it looks from 30 centimeters from the canvas. This painting is, I believe, 70 or 80 centimeters in height. It's not supposed to be viewed from a half a meter. 
You're supposed to stand at least two meters from this one, therefore you need to step back sometimes and look at it from a little afar. I know that some artists like to use long brushes to be able to get a little distance from the canvas while painting. I don't. I step back continuously and with experience you can also learn to ignore some of the instinctive urges while standing close to the canvas. You learn to apply the colors more boldly without being too disturbed about how messy it looks when you have the details in close up in front of you. You learn to have confidence in the method and continue to fill out the colors and add the nuances little by little. Millet has such an expressive face, so it's fun to put him in this kind of rigid clothing and posture. It makes for a great contrast. The lighting in the original painting is coming from the front and the original photo of Millet is also lighted from the front, so they merge quite nicely without too many adjustments afterwards. When you have uh, covered the whole canvas and you start to get a feel of the whole, you see things that you want to adjust though. You see dark areas that aren't as dark as you want them, you need to work on the shapes of certain areas to really get a feel for the volume of the clothing and the body, for example. The painting is almost monochrome and uh, that actually makes the work easier to handle. With many vibrant colors in a painting, it's harder to make them all come together and feel like a whole. Now it's time to turn out the contrast and put in the highlights and that is really a pleasure to do. This is where the painting really comes to life. I add headlights in his wonderfully wild hair and I also want to add some lighting at the edges to make it come forward a little from the back. Speaking of the background, I didn't really enjoy the brownish tone behind him, so I decided to get another light feeling there. More grayish. And um, now when the painting is starting to sh take shape, you can see some places that stand out too much as well. There are some light parts in the clothing that pops out, and not in a good way. So now it's time for me to fine tune the values and the colors of the painting. It's interesting to see how small details can make a volume or a body to suddenly appear real. You need to use your eyes, because a lot of times when you start to paint, you feel like you're just creating a mess. It doesn't look good. It might look cartoonish or just wrong. But if you trust the process and the method that we use for catching the right colors of the scene, then you might only need one little added touch of paint to make it all come forward and emerge from the canvas. It's really fascinating. It's completed and I'm uh, very pleased with the result and I'm very pleased to have been working on this one. It has been such a pleasure. And I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, please share and like this video and also consider subscribing to the channel. I put up new material, new paintings continuously, so if you want to be notified, please subscribe to the channel. And there are also links to uh, manuals on how to learn to paint like this, and uh, there are links to online trainings as well. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.